This just in, in the meat industry, everyone has gone gaga for Hillshire Brands. Here's what I think in a special From the Editor's Desk Breaking News Edition. Hi viewers and welcome to a special Breaking News Edition of From the Editor's Desk. In fact, it is so breaking news that we are coming to you literally from the Editor's Desk. So this is where the magic happens for the National Provisioner every month. Uh, welcome to my little home. Uh, pardon the mess. So I had to chime in on the whole Hillshire brand situation. Uh, what I think about the different options, opportunities, situations, uh, and give you my take. So Pinnacle Foods was the first uh, big news, the Hillshire Pinnacle merger. Um, and even though that's kind of become a subtext to the whole situation, I will share that I was a little bit confused by that uh, situation, that opportunity, if you will. Um, when you consider that Hillshire came out of Sara Lee, a notoriously uh, complex, diversified company uh, in terms of its product portfolio, and it came out of their very highly focused on meat, um, I was curious about why they would expand their portfolio. Yes, Pinnacle is only in food, but they are not meat-centric. Um, I, I didn't think that it was going to be a bad situation, but I was definitely curious to see how that would work out uh, if it happened. Um, but that, of course, became not a moot point, but a, uh, definitely a subtext to everything that's gone on since this week. Uh, first, we had Pilgrim's Pride make a bid on Hillshire business, uh, contingent upon the Pinnacle deal being called off, and then Tyson Foods made a similar uh, si similar acquisition bid for a little bit more money on paper. Um, so now it's really Tyson or Pilgrim's, and you know, does Hillshire join either of these uh, companies? And which one? Um, either of these companies definitely stands to benefit from uh, bolting on Hillshire brands, if you will. I think Pilgrims, based on my own experiences and my own knowledge of the situation, stands to benefit more, uh, simply based on the gaps that the Hillshire brands business fills at Pilgrims Pride and JBS versus how Hill Hillshire brands would meld with Tyson Foods. Um, you know, Pilgrims is more of a commodity-driven uh, company. Uh, they do have strong brands, but I wouldn't think I, I wouldn't say that that consumers view uh, JBS or Pilgrims Pride as a brand-centric company, and I, I don't either. Um, you know, they do again have strong brands, but they're not the same as uh, Tyson for one but other companies like Hormel Foods, for example, as well, which is very brand-centric, uh, very brand-oriented, even in its very diverse portfolio. I think Pilgrim's adding Hillshire brands gives them immediate strength there. Um, consumers may not know that Pilgrim's, JBS, uh, owns Hillshire brands if that were to happen, and the brands could co go on with their loyal customers and with their innovation and everything as well, um, you know, Pilgrims is uh, is it doesn't have a very heavy uh, load in the value-added retail space either. Um, Hillshire brings that to the table, and uh, I think that would be a really really good uh, combination together. That doesn't mean I think that if Tyson were to uh, win the bid, if you were, would uh, if you will. Um, I don't think that would be a bad combination. Um, I think the Tyson executives in their conference call saying that it is a one plus one equals three situation uh, are spot on. In my own view, uh, Tyson and Hillshire are very similar in their approaches and in their strategies uh, in terms of their brands and their innovation around products. Um, one just has to look at industry uh, stories not just with us, but with any of the industry uh, publications. You know, both Tyson and Hillshire 
talk innovation all the time. They're always showing off their innovation R&D centers, and they're always kind of pushing the envelope in innovation. You know, Tyson's Anytizer products, uh, off the top of my head, are a good example. And, you know, Hillshire's uh, strong push in breakfast, and not just uh, line extensions and flavor extensions, but innovative ideas that have really, you know, pushed breakfast uh, and protein in breakfast specifically uh, further and further along. You know, obviously Tyson has been seriously interested in that innovation on the breakfast side because they launched their Day Starts product in February. Um, it'll be very interesting to see if these two companies come together, what happens with that product line, with that brand, if it. Uh, improves or if it's kind of dwarfed by the Hillshire uh, breakfast brands and breakfast products, but that's to be seen. Um, I think that Tyson can live without Hillshire brands. Um, I think it's on the right, it's on a similar trajectory in, in the innovation space. Um, it doesn't mean that Pilgrims can't live without Hillshire brands, but I think Hillshire brands brings more to the table for Pilgrims Pride than it does for Tyson Foods. Um, either way, uh, I think both companies are a good fit for the Hillshire brand folks. Um, I don't think either company is going to um, necessarily uh, come in and gut the, the situation or gut the staff or gut the facilities, things like that. Obviously, I don't know. I'm just basing on having visited the, all three companies and having uh, done stories on them. But um, you know, I think it's a, a good situation for uh, for all three companies involved in that respect. And if it turns out to be that Hillshire ends up merging with Pinnacle, and uh, that's uh, that's all that happens here, I'll be a little confused. Um, but I'll be definitely interested to see how it turns out in that respect. So um, good luck to my friends at Hillshire Brands and. Um, good luck to Tyson and Pilgrims and Pinnacle Foods if it's still in the mix. And uh, keep watching our website and, and our magazine for more on this story as it develops. We'll try and keep things going and keep things updated. And in the meantime, have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the next From the Editor's Desk.